I'm back right here in Tarleton in conversation with Eric. Hey, you're here. Hello, Mbali. Welcome to Uneo Farms. How are you? Thank you. I'm doing good, thanks. Great. What do you have in store for us today? Mbali, you're welcome. Come through. Let me show you what Uneo Farms has got in store for you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Eric, you're known for farming peppers and chilies. That's right, my friend. Why am I seeing green beans in this tunnel? Crop rotation. Okay. That's it. So we just had our peppers here. We planted pepper in November last year. And uh, we've been harvesting up until July this year. Um, so the next most important a key element in farming is crop rotation. So the one crop that we as Oneo Farms rotating our peppers with is green beans. But not just any green beans, quality green beans as you can see. Yeah, so we're typically used to green beans growing maybe knee high, yes, you know, a bush. the bush one. What type of variety is this? So, so this is um, a Moreleda. The name of the variety is called Moreleda. It's a, it's a runner beans. It can grow as high as about 3.9 meters to 4 meters high. And the reason why we stick to this one is because the structure does allow us to plant a runner bean. Two is quality is what is key at O'Neill Farm. So we knew that this particular variety will give us the quality that we've, we, we, we're known for. So you mentioned crop rotation and the importance of, for you guys, you're farming green beans, right? That's correct. But it's summer season right now, which is a season prominent for peppers. Yes. Why didn't you plant your beans earlier on in the year so that you can take advantage of the season for your peppers? So I'll tell you what we, we do as Uno Farm. So we've got a planting program for about four years. So we knew already that we will still have be in production in terms of the peppers. Out of our 10 hectare farm, we've got about two and a half hectares fully planted currently with peppers. Mm -hmm. So we're just rotating in there. So we still have our shade nets full of peppers. We've got our open field still full of peppers. 72,000 peppers have just been planted at one of our farms. So when would you be planting your peppers or chili in the specific tunnel infrastructure. So, so this, we have in this particular green beans for three months. After three months now, we're putting in our Carolina Reaper in the same greenhouse. Yeah. Yes. How do you combat pests and diseases on your farm? I'll tell you. So we've got the right um, uh, partnership with uh, certain companies in terms of dealing with pests and diseases. Mm. Powdery mildew is one of our biggest problems. Aphids and white flies are our biggest. So we've got the agronomists that are always on board to give us advice. They're normally on this farm every Wednesday or every Tuesday, every week, to walk the fields and check the performance of our crops and give us advice based on that. So that's how we sort of manage right partnership with the right mentors yeah. and the right agronomists. You have different structures as well in your farm. That's correct. Shade net houses, open yes. fields, yes. Um, and the tunnels houses. as yes. well. Um, how important is infrastructure on farm, especially towards production? I'll tell you, so, so we, our area is known, is prone to hail and mm -hmm. frost. So if we're not farming undercover, chances are we're going to lose half of our crops, if not most of our crops. So going undercover is very key. In this particular area, to be specific, Talton um, as a whole, you need to go undercover. But very importantly is planting on open field versus planting undercover. We get more yield undercover than on open field. Mm. So that's the reason why we're going bigger on and planting mm. undercover. Everybody always says, you know, under greenhouse you get more yield. Yes. But for people who are still trying to grapple around the science of how is it that you're getting more yield, yep. please explain to us what does a greenhouse do okay. uh, in this case maybe to your green beans or to your peppers or to your chilies okay. as opposed to farming it outside? I'll tell you, I'll tell you one of the th things, as much as we cannot control the temperature, yeah. but we can sort of manage the temperature in a greenhouse. We can't control but we can manage it. We also have got some of the sensors in the greenhouses where we monitor our humidity, we monitor our soil temperature, but we're also monitoring the temperature of the greenhouse itself. And that on its own then help us to get that production in a greenhouse a little bit much higher. Yeah, yeah. and you're farming also directly into the soil. That's correct. Would you look at maybe uh, 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 converting into farming with growing medium? No. I'll tell you I'll tell you the one thing that has never actually excited us is I've always been a fan of planting in the soil. Um, th th there's something magic about the soil uh, compared to the medium. I've never tested it. I've known of other farmers that have tested planting in mediums, but we're planting in the soil itself because of the, the nature of the soil itself to hold on to the minerals and, and the nutrients that we're feeding into the plants. Yeah. 
Yeah. Over and above crop rotation, how else are you preserving the, the nutrients and the texture and the quality of your soil season after season? So one of the things that we try and do in these greenhouses is we try and do less of the tilling of the soil, you know, to make sure that we still maintain. But the other thing that we try and do when we're planting our peppers is we're putting what we call a mulching plastic, where we try and, and, and restore our, our, our soil moisture. That we ran a trial uh, in the previous season, it worked wonders for us. So when we go back to our green, um, uh, uh, peppers, we're going to put the mulching plastic again. Yeah. That on its own help us to look after the soil, that in turn will look after us. So from being a successful pepper now chili farmer as well, yes. what are the three top tips that you could give to a farmer who's producing peppers and chilies? Okay, so so get the right seeds. I think I, I think I cannot stress <laughs> getting the right seeds. Yeah. Um, getting the right seeds. Farm, when you farm, get the right agronomies. You know, partner, I cannot farm, I cannot even operate this farm without advices from the right agronomist. But I think I'm getting a lot of input, positive input also from the mentors. I think those key things are helping me because getting the right seed, make sure that I get the right quantity, the right quality, and I become consistent. But getting the right agronomies means this produce that you get to see is going to become one of the best. Wow, fridges. I'm so glad that you know everything around your farm and I think that's what makes a successful yeah. farmer, right? Yeah. Knowing their water, their soil, yep. the infrastructure, the temperatures, the humidities, the exactly. seasons, exactly. understanding the crop as well. So yeah, best of luck to your season. Thanks, thanks my friend. Thank All right. you. <laughs>